Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I'm here in the garage doing a little... I'll uh, shoot a quick video. It's uh, January the 2nd, 2023. I'm going to try and post more content. Uh, we do a lot of race-related things. We shot a lot of content. It hasn't turned into anything. I have piles of stuff to make videos. So I'm going to try and shoot a quick video here. Uh, I wanted to do some work on the car today, but it's 4.30. It's going to be getting dark. So... I'd probably wait till next weekend and we'll work on it in the shop. So here in the garage, uh, I've got some parts laid out down here on the table. We just did an M50 swap on one of the E30s we run, and we want to add an oil cooler. Uh, the 325i uh, E30s came factory with an oil cooler. The E-cars did not. And those cars used a fairly normal sandwich-style oil cooler adapter. Screws on where the oil filter is on the passenger side of the car. It's pretty easy to add an oil cooler to those cars. Uh, we've got one, we've had them on both cars, and uh, uh, the two M20s, one of them had stock exhaust manifolds, one had a header. I will tell you that car with a header, freaking oil filter is a pain to change because it's under the header, it's hard to get to, um, but still manageable. Now, going to an M50, once you get into the M50, and M52, and the M54 motors, they don't just have an oil filter that screws onto the block. They have this gem of an oil filter housing adapter. This here is your leaky gasket. We changed this a couple times on it and it's still leaking. But anyway, this is a standard uh, oil filter housing adapter for an M50. Uh, the ones on my M54 are basically the same part. The top's plastic. I don't know if this is really any different. This gasket's the same, and they all suck. They all leak. They don't suck. They just they they leak over time. Um, but this doesn't have an easy way to add an oil cooler. You're like, well, hey, I got two holes here. Well, they come off the same thing, and this is the one that goes to the vanos. Uh, this is the oil pressure sender. So anyway, there's not just a hey, here's how I can add an oil uh, cooler to the system. And I'm saying that as I'm looking at this passage down here. And mm, whatever. So, anyway, some companies, uh, a lot of people, I would say the easy method is you buy a cap, places this part, and it's got two lines that come in, and, and that's how you can add it. That's probably the quickest, easiest, to call it the quick and dirty method. Uh, I really didn't want the hoses sticking off the top. I wanted a, I wanted it to be cleaner. Uh, the, the S series motors in the M3 cars have an oil cooler, and the lines come off down here like this. So a lot of people, you buy you buy an S52 or 54. I think the 52 is the same adapter, but I don't know. Uh, I know all the S54s, it's like that. So they come off of here, and I don't have one of those. So you're like, okay. Um, then I found this housing, and this is off of a Z3 M, M version. And this is a little weird, because I'm like, I thought they all had oil coolers. So it's got these two ports, and they're threaded. And you're like, huh? What do you mean? Like, why is that weird? So, if you were doing a standard, uh, say, S54 motor, you would have two parts that go into those two ports, like the ones that I can't open the bag on. See if I can get this bag to pop open. All right. So this is... Not identical, but this is an aftermarket method to do this. And um, these aren't threaded, they're smooth. And I'm dropping the O-rings on the floor. There goes one of them. So you have two smooth fittings. The O-rings go on them like that. And... Um, from the factory, I believe one of them is actually made as a single piece like this in one. These are a pair of these with a little horseshoe bracket. And I believe these are, um, they're bigger than the ones I got. I think these are, if I'm right, six is a bigger number, bigger diameter. I think these are A and sixes. But on a, on an M54, you'd have something like this. And it would go on where these two holes are. So 
So you'd, and where these two are threaded holes, this would go in here like that. These would drop in. You'd have an O-ring that seals it and a bolt going down the middle to hold it in. Uh, I will, and this is a big fitting, so that's an upside. Now, I was like, all right, when I saw this, um, I think we paid a little under 200 bucks for this delivered. I suggested it to Brett. He bought it. Um, so I'm glad he bought it. Now I got to figure out how to make it work. So this method, and I bought these figuring I was going to try and find a, an, an S54 piece, which I hadn't found that was a, a good deal. So I ordered these fittings, and the interesting thing is these are two different threads. Um, one's, I think this one's M14, and this one's M16. So, and when I put them in the correct holes, thread these in, so this drops in. And that gets me, these are AN8s, so I think that's bigger. Um, I think the 8's still going to be big enough, but I can go this route. That gets me to AN's. I can screw an AN on and go to my hose. And so I've got a straight AN fitting, and I can go to my hose. And the ID on that, that's probably close to 3 eighths of an inch. So that would work. Um, and it gets it done. All it's two pieces to accomplish getting to where I still got a hose clamped on. Uh, if I go this route, even though I have these, I'll probably go to a hydraulic shop and um, get them crimped on. I might buy a little band clamp type thing and not have a hose clamp on here just so it's smoother. And that's really why I like having them crimped at a hydraulic shop. It's just a round collar. It's crimped. It's smooth. It's clean. Uh, but it's, you know, another trip somewhere. They're well, probably a little heavier too. These are... These are aluminum and a hydraulic fitting is probably steel. Now, method number two, I ordered two little hose barbs. I couldn't quite get the same size, so they're slightly different. They don't look much different in that picture, um, and they're, they're close to the size of the oil cooler off the, the E30. Now these will drop right in, and I can go that way. And I'll put them in, I'll show you, and I'll show you why I like them, other than, you know, it's... So these dropped right in. Uh, I couldn't find these both from the same source and I bought them both off of eBay. I couldn't just find somebody that had these. You know, and I understand that here in the US we don't just have metric stuff. I went to my local hydraulic shop and I'm like, hey, I need some hose barbs and, and metric land. They're looking at me like, are you nuts? I mean, you know, in Europe and China, I'm pretty sure those guys are not using, you know, American pipe thread, NPT stuff. But you know, here in the US, these were a little harder to find. I did find them, but I couldn't just find one place that had them, let alone buy in a pile. These weren't real expensive, and I, I bought them both uh, from sellers on eBay. I, I, looked, um, I looked at a few local suppliers. I think I looked at Granger. I didn't find them. Now, this goes in. The hose goes on. This one's slightly smaller. Um, I would have to go with probably a hose that fits this size. It would probably clamp down and work, but I think I'll just use new hose this size. It's a tiny bit smaller than the other one. Um, I think you could put the slightly smaller hose on. The drawback to all this is, how am I affecting my oil pressure? Because it's still a smaller oil than... So if you look at these two, compared to this one, they're smaller. Um, you know, that, that almost fits in it. That's, that's how much of a difference there is. So that could affect oil pressure, or volume at least. I don't know if it's going to kill us. I don't know if it's going to matter. And I dropped those both on the floor. Well, so getting back to why I liked this method after I just dropped the piece on the floor was if I leave this in here, I can show you why I like it. Screw this one back in. Screw this back in. And then slide this on. So 
this is way shorter than this, so it's not sticking out real far. So that part of it I like. Now I will tell you if I was working on the car and this is clamped on, all I've got to do to pop this off is unscrew this. This may back out, but it's going to probably be pretty easy to do. So if we had to pull the motor, you'd unscrew this, set the thing out of the way. That's all fine. That's going to be fairly easy. Now, if I'm using new hose, especially, um, this thing isn't going to stick on real bad because this is too big. But once this is clamped on and you're using the right size hose, when you undo the clamp, this isn't just going to come off. It's, you're going to fight with it. And I'll show you because I fought with it a minute ago using the other side. And it was just slid on, never, not even clamped. That's just, and this is a used, our used hose. So I took one of these and I slid it on and it doesn't just want to slide off. And it's not even on tight and it still won't just pop right off. So if we're working on the car, you want to pull this off. It's, get a better shot at the table. I mean, this thing doesn't want to come off now. So, I'm probably pouring oil out on my foot. That was, you know, pretty challenging. That was pretty challenging for a hose that's even big. So that's the drawback to it is, you know, it's going to be hard to get off if we're working on the car compared to an AN. So aside from that, there's that, that, that gets us part of where we need to go. That does not get us all the way to where we need to go. This is a Vanos line here and it's uh m14 i believe this little hole here is only an m12 and that's where the old vanos went that doesn't just work you can buy these and they're already done so that's where i went and said all right i bought an m14 tap and drilled it for the tap and i'll have to drill it and tap it you can buy them already done that way uh but by the time you buy them that way they want they want something ridiculous for the thing. I mean, this part from BMW is around 400, and then if you want to buy it with all that, or or sometimes guys will get a um, an adapter for the Vanos line. You're, you're getting six, you know, you're I think you're up to 600 bucks. So I was just trying to not spend over 500 dollars on an oil cooler. I mean, it just it gets cost prohibitive. I just didn't. I thought it was expensive. So I will drill and tap this. I'm not doing that here today. I don't have a vise here. Uh, I don't, I'm a little, I don't want to freehand it uh, without a vise. But here's the other thing we've got to contend with. This part of this is machined to have a thermostat that opens and closes to push oil out to the oil cooler. And uh, they never ran that on this setup. So it's machined, but not all the way. There should have been a little ridge in here for a um, snap ring. Uh, I could probably get the thermostat and figure out a way to hold it in there. Uh, but once you want to do this and we're running race, we're doing this for racing, the, I need to buy a little block off that blocks this off and it's going to force the oil to run through the oil cooler and come back. Uh, there might be a chance in cold weather we might be overcooling the oil. I don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal. Uh, we raced Road Atlanta about a month ago and we ran it without the oil cooler in the m50 it was warmer weather than we've had in atlanta most of the time uh, we didn't seem to have any oil issues we had good oil pressure uh, i will say when the engine's hot after it comes off track and it's idling a while we don't have a ton of oil pressure and even the m20 is like that on track we're maintaining i think like 40 psi oil pressure that's running uh da -da 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 mobile 11550 that's what we ran we drained out the 1040 so this is kind of part one next weekend we'll probably i'll order the parts and we'll work the rest of this out we may put it on the car uh, i don't know yet but it looks like i can make these pieces uh get this old cooler onto the e30 i can also use this setup uh and do my m54s and I got to decide if I want to do ANs or hose barbs. And I may also look to see if I can get bigger hose barbs. It could also be something like, hey, I, 
I could up, I could drill and tap this. I don't know. I, I, my other concern with this whole equation is if we're going to flow enough oil to the oil cooler, if the line size is going to be big enough that it doesn't affect our oil pressure. But anyway, that's it. It's a quick video. And uh, there you go. Happy New Year.